On this channel I show a lot of Valorant tips, tricks and cool mechanics. But usually these tips and tricks are very short and just for one specific agent. And I read your comments, most of these tricks you guys even forget during your games. So today we're gonna do things a little different. Instead of showing a lot of small tricks, I'll just give you a few tips that I know for sure is useful for every type of watcher. Doesn't matter if you're a duelist main, a sentinel main, with the tips I'm about to tell you in this video, you'll improve in Valorant guaranteed. Now sit back, relax and enjoy the video. Let's start with the tip about the post plant. Imagine, it's a 1v1 situation and the spike is planted over here. In this round you know that the last enemy is long because your teammate killed you and everybody is always standing long. So at this point you probably already know a lot of tactics that you can use. But a lot of people are using the most common tactic wrong. And that's this one. In this type of situation a lot of people will tap the spike and then aim into long in the hope that the enemies are walking into their crosshair. Do you spot the mistake over here? Let me show you from the enemy's perspective. If the enemy hears you tapping the spike, he will go for a peek, then sees you aiming at him and he will go back around the corner again. Okay, Mr. Lowlander, get to the point. Well, my friends, the fact that you tap the spike and then aim at the enemy while staying on the spike isn't the most effective way to play this. What you instead should do is tap the spike, move to the right and then aim into long. The reason, when the enemy is peeking now, they will not see the spike first, but they will see you first. And usually because they expect you standing on the spike, they might peek a little too deep and that's how they die. This exact situation actually happened during a game of mine. Just take a look. What the heck? If you slow this clip down, you notice that I was actually trying to aim for the spike, but the sneaky phoenix walked a little bit to the right and that's how he got me. And this is the first tip of this video. Think about your positioning after you tap the spike in a post plant. And before we go to the next thing, you need to keep one more thing in mind. Let's take the same example and imagine that an enemy is standing on the right side instead of the left. Now suddenly, it's a really bad thing to walk to the right after you tap the spike. The reason, if the enemy is speaking now, they will see the spike first before they see you. So when you are trying to use this tactic, you always need to walk to the opposite side of where the enemy is standing. And that's positioning in the post plant for you, my friends. Keep this in mind in your next game. Let's move on now. Another thing you need to pay attention to is choosing the right battles. A lot of players, when they see an enemy, they want to fight that enemy. This makes sense, right? Everybody wants to be a top fracker and make as many kills as possible. But often, even though you think it's a good battle to take, you can do way more efficient things during a round. Take this round as an example. In this round, I got a nice kill. Oh my God. One enemy remaining. Sadly, our breach was AFK though, so 1v1 situation. Another thing I knew was that the last guy was in garage, so in this round, the safe thing I could do was plant the spike over here. If I did that, there was no way KO would get to me in time before I planted the spike, so it should be a good decision, right? Wrong, my friends. On paper, you might get the plan down, but what do you do after that? You're limiting yourself from a lot of space, because you're not sure if the enemy is gonna speak from spawn or garage, and there's a high chance that you will have a face-to-face -face 1v1. This is no bueno, my friends. Let's go back to the round. Look at the timer i got more than one minute to play with so instead of planting the spike on c i decided to rotate back to a the goal of the rotate try to find the position where the pressure is on the enemy and not on myself Whoa, did you see that? I spotted KO in mid. Again, a lot of people would just go for the 1v1 battle over here, but if I were to peek in middle, it was an equal battle, so it's again not the right battle to take. Instead, I decided to run all the way to C, plant the spike, and after you plant the spike, the pressure is on the defender side players. At this point, for the enemy, I could be anywhere on site, so I had way more advantage playing over here from A than if I would have planted in C or peeked in middle, and that's how I won this round. Got him, got him. Next tip that you can use in your next game, distraction abilities. In Valorant, every ability has a direct purpose. With the smoke you want to block something off, with the flash you want to flash the enemies, and with mollies you want to get enemies out of corners. But what if you don't use your abilities directly for their purpose, and instead you use your abilities as a distraction? At this moment this might sound a bit fake to you, but luckily I got a few examples. I think the easiest and most direct example is about the kill your alarm bot. A lot of people are using this ability in their setups or to get deep information, but don't do that. Instead of using it for info, you place it around the corner, you sit yourself on the other side of the corner, and when the enemies are walking past, they get distracted by the alarm bot, and that's the moment when you peek. A bit like this. Oh, the ID is so good, but by him. This example is the most basic form, but you can do this with any agent and any ability. With the smoke, for example. In this round, the last guy was in tiles, so what I did was throw my smoke on the left side of the pillar, and then peek myself on the right side. It will be. 
Ah, nice. that's the fake dude. <laughs> the fake. Usually the smoke over there is completely useless, but the sole purpose of that ability was to broader my playing field, distract the enemy so I can peek from multiple angles. Some other examples are a race boom bot at the right and peek on the left yourself. Place your sage well in a fishy position, but stand a little on the back so when the enemy shoot on it, you can kill them. And there are a lot more options. Use your creativity. And this concludes the distraction abilities. Let's move on now and talk about the body system. As you probably have heard about a thousand times because everybody is talking about it, you know that in Valorant you need to work as a team and play as much together as possible. But still, even though we know we should play together, a lot of people are playing solo anyway because they don't know how to play together or often just completely forget to play together. And for that my friends, we have the body system. The body system is a tactic that you can use that should remind yourself of playing together with the body. Here's how it works. When the round is about to start, you pick a teammate and that's your body of the round. Now, during that round, you pay close attention to that buddy. Make sure that you can make plays of his plays. Is your buddy going for a sneaky red play? Try to get into a position so that when your buddy gets spotted, you can assist them. Ah, oh, sorry dude. Is your buddy pushing something? Try to flash him in. Your buddy gets stunned in the enemy's territory? Follow him so he doesn't die for nothing. You get the point, right? And now I hear some people thinking, Mr. Lowlander, the body system is just a fancy way of saying playing together. And my answer to that is yes, but also no. The reason why the body system is effective is because during a round you constantly keep reminding to yourself that you should play together with your body. And choosing one body is a lot of simpler to start with than just start quote, playing together with your team, end quote. This term is way too broad because like I said, a lot of people will forget it. And by choosing only one body, you know exactly where to focus on. And when that body is making a mistake, you might be able to fix that mistake by getting a refrag. A bit like you see in the background, yes I was following my buddy all the way through the lurk. In the end he sadly died but I could fix it. Next tippy, this one is all about your ultimate. As we all know, when your ultimate is ready or almost ready, you should play around your ultimate with your team. Luckily, this is something that a lot of people are doing. When your ultimate is ready, you're gonna make a game plan with it and easy peasy kills. However, something that less people are doing is paying attention to their teammates' ultimates. This is something you should be doing way more often. Take this round for example. In this round, my teammate KJ only needed one orb for her ultimate. And even though in this round she was taking the orb, trying to place her ultimate down, I was already pushing way too deep and died before the ultimate could have gone off. Oh, yo, yo. Ah, they're two inside. I should have waited for the KJ ultimate over there. But this, my friends, was not the only time that this happened during this game. Because a few rounds later, again, I was pushing in way too deep while KJ was taking the orb and tried to place her ultimate. Oh, I almost didn't got that headshot there. Even though we got the sight, things would be way easier if I just waited for the KJ ultimate. So that's this tip. Not only pay attention if your teammates ultimates are ready, but also pay attention to how many ult points they need. Do they only need one? Then communicate with your teammates. Yo, Killjoy, take that ultimate orb. Wait for it and easy push. And by the way, a quick side tippy. Ultimate orbs are so strong, way stronger than you think. In this round, I was eco. I needed two orbs for my ulti. So I took one, teleported to the other side, took another one, and boom, double kill on the eco. Here we go. Wow, zoom, zoom, zoom kills. The next thing I want to talk about is the first round of the game. Because there's a thing in this round that many people are doing. And that's always buying the same things in the first round. Overall, there are two types of first round Valorant players. The ghost players or the light shield players. And overall, the ghost players will never buy a light shield and the light shield players will never buy a ghost. Just think about it. What type of player are you? And do you ever switch? I've noticed this with myself. It's just a habit that I always buy the light shield in the first round. Doesn't matter what agent I'm playing. But lately, I've been switching it up so now and then. And oh my god. It feels very good my friends. A tippy I can give with this is that you shouldn't always be looking at your agent because different buys are needed on different maps and different spots. So my friends, those were a few tips that you can use in your next game. If you made it all the way to this point and you want to support the channel, don't forget to subscribe and I see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.